Okay, we're going to add a two switch elevator in UDK. We want to add an interp actor here that's going to serve as our elevator. The way you do that is to select any mesh in your content browser. I've selected a wall here. I'm going to right click here, add interp actor. If you don't have this option, you can also go to add actor, all templates and add interp actor here and sometimes you'll have to actually press this green arrow to fill in the blank as long as you have your wall or whatever you're using selected in the content browser that will work just fine now I'm gonna hit OK and the key is that it must be an interp actor or this is not going to work you can't just use a regular mesh by dragging it onto the level Okay, I've repositioned and scaled, repositioned and changed the size of my elevator platform just to fit into place. And now we need to right click, add actor, add trigger. This will be our first switch. We're going to put it in halfway inside the wall. Now I'm going to copy that and paste it and we'll move another copy right here and it doesn't matter where you put the switch it just matters that it's about uh, approximately halfway sticking out of whatever surface that you want your switch to be attached to that has worked best for me in the past okay let's select our first trigger now we're going to open kismet right click new matinee we'll adjust these matinee settings shortly right click over here to the left and select new event using trigger 3 your trigger may have a different name but it will not be in this list unless you previously selected it like I just did so we have new event using trigger 3 and we want to select used I'm gonna reposition this a bit right click between the two and new action switch switch let's reposition this and let's do the same thing for our other trigger I'm gonna select this trigger right click new event using trigger 2 used right click here new action switch switch Okay, let's connect our bottom trigger, the one for the first floor, this trigger. Connect use to end to, of the switch, and then from the switch you want to connect link 1 to play. Trigger 2, use to end on this switch, and link 1 to reverse. So this is going to play our animation, and this is going to reverse it, which will effectively create an up and down elevator okay we need to change a few options let's click on this switch check looping which is under you have to expand this, these settings to check looping let's click here check looping now let's look at our trigger three properties under sequence event you want to set max trigger count to zero same thing for the other trigger this ensures that your elevator will work more than once and this is hooked up the way we want it so I'm gonna X this out we want to select our elevator platform which is an interp actor open matinee right click here add new empty group I'll call it elevator okay and let's right click on our new group add new movement track on our timeline let's select about one second that's what the one stands for and click add key and now we can adjust the movement of our elevator I'm gonna move this up to the second floor get it as flush as I can by just eyeballing it and this yellow line indicates that we've successfully added a movement track 
now we need to shorten our movement track. It's by default five seconds, but we want to slide this little red flag over to the one second mark approximately. And that ensures that our animation is only one second completely. So let's go ahead and hit stop, play. There it is moving up. And the reverse version of that is going down. So we have an up and down elevator. Okay, let's X out matinee. Last step, we need to right click our elevator platform, go to Interp Actor Properties, and under Collision, you want to select Block All, which will automatically select Block Rigid Body underneath, X, and actually there is one more step. It's very important that the player can see where these triggers are located so you need to put some mesh some sort of mesh or switch or something there to show players where they need to be facing when they press the action button to activate the elevator so I'm just gonna type in light and we'll use this light I have it selected here I'm going to right click here and add the light, add static mesh. You can also just drag it from the content browser if you want. Let me rotate this around to be flush with the wall. Okay. And you just want to imagine that the player's hand is touching this switch and you would put some sort of mesh to show them what they're supposed to be touching and this will make a lot of sense when we test it out a lot more sense okay copy paste slide this up to approximately the same position and you can see that our switch is directly in the center or I'm sorry our our trigger is directly in the center of this light so it tells the player they can press the action button over this light to activate the switch. And you can use any mesh you want for this, of course. I just quickly grabbed a light. Okay, let's try this. Let's build all. Close, right click, play from here. Okay, here's my elevator. I'm going to walk up to my switch. I'm going to press E to use it and it went up to the second floor as you can see and now I'm going to point at this switch and press E to use it again and that brings it down and you can see obviously I need to reposition my buttons but that is the basics of how to make this thing work this is a two trigger elevator switch that's working and of course you could use this technique for a door or anything using Kismet